In this third video on our OOP series, we introduce the concept of encapsulation. So encapsulation is the bundling of data with the methods that operate on and restrict direct access to it. Encapsulation is used to hide the values or internal state of an object, preventing direct access unauthorized parties. Encapsulated attributes of an object should only be accessible or changeable via the methods provided by that object. Encapsulation is designed to keep data related to an object safe. It can't accidentally be altered by another part of the program without using the code provided in the methods, thus keeping the programmer in control. In this diagram, you can see that other instantiated objects are prevented from directly accessing or altering the object's private attributes without going through its methods first. Think of these private attributes a little bit like local variables. Any attempt to directly access an object's private attributes will result in an error. You must supply methods if you want an object's internal attributes to be read or altered. As such, an object's methods are normally set to public and not private. As the methods are part of the same object as its private attributes, it will be able, therefore, to access them. OK, let's actually have a look at this in the form of some code. This line of code here instantiates a new object of the person class called person1 and we set its private attributes to name equals Sam and address equals Stroud. This line of code will produce an error. Although there is an object called person1 with an attribute called name, its attribute is private, so a value cannot be assigned to it. This line calls the person one's object's method set name and passes in the string t. However, the code for this method also checks the length of the string that's been passed in. The if statement requires the value passed in to be between 3 and 20 characters long. As we only supplied one character, the if statement catches this invalid attempt to change the state of its private name attribute and instead outputs an error message. We've used this method to protect the private name attribute from an unwanted change. This final line of code will be perfectly valid. The value Tom gets passed in via the setName method. The if statement checks that the input is of an acceptable length and subsequently updates its private attribute name to Tom. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is encapsulation and how does it help to create robust programs?